Hello, welcome to the Friday, May 13th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. We do have a quick follow-up by Rob today to a diary that he wrote a few days ago about how to figure out what the latest patches are that Microsoft has to offer in order to check if your systems are completely patched. Now this involved PowerShell and the connection to the Microsoft update catalog in order to retrieve a current available updates. But when Rob moved the script to production, well, it failed. And apparently the problem here was that the client systems had a rather tightly configured TLS configuration. It's unusual, but uh, still a good idea for clients uh, to limit, for example, the TLS ciphers that they are supporting. And sadly, the Microsoft Update Catalog does not yet support TLS 1.3, which would have been an option here. Probably not a huge surprise here from Microsoft's end, given that Microsoft Server is a little bit uh, behind here when it comes uh, to TLS 1.3 support. And I believe only the latest version, Windows Server 2022, officially supports uh, TLS 1.3 out of the box. And a little bit lost this week in Microsoft and other updates is an update by HP for its PC bias. This is the May 2022 update released on May 10th, and it fixes two vulnerabilities, both with a base score of 8.8 .8 and both with the possibility of arbitrary code execution. HP did not include a lot of detail with its advisory, but a long list of affected systems, including notebooks, desktops, point of sales PCs, desktop workstations, and also thin client PCs. But it's not just HP sneaking in some BIOS updates. We also got some from Intel. That's the 2022.1 IPU BIOS advisory. It fixes, I believe it was 11 vulnerabilities. And the highest CVS score here is 8.2, which was assigned to four of the vulnerabilities. Well, these vulnerabilities do allow code execution as a privileged user but they also do require local access, which is sort of typical for these BIOS vulnerabilities. A large part of Intel's current processor offerings are affected. It looks like the more severe vulnerabilities are predominantly affecting the server class chips, so high-end vulnerabilities for high-end CPUs. And Rapid7 release details regarding uh, remote code injection vulnerability that was addressed in Cycel firewalls. CVE 2022 5 was patched end of April and well, it does affect the zero touch provisioning system of these firewalls. So if you have this feature in your firewall, you probably wanna pay attention to this advisory. Exploitation is as so often trivial looks sort of a little bit like uh, the uh, big IP vulnerable in the sense that you essentially can post a JSON message with some bash script that will then be executed. However, the web server in this case only runs as nobody. Of course, still plenty of damage that can be done and looking forward to Mirai and similar bots adopting this particular exploit. It's so it just fits into their repertoire. Well, and that's it again for today. Thanks again for listening. And remember, second week of July, July 11th through 16th, we'll have our annual SANS Fire Conference in Washington, D.C., this time in person and also live online. And one chance to meet some of our handlers and we'll have some events around the Internet Storm Center at the conference. That's it. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.